Yesterday, Sierraji spoke about how one observes whatever of the four kinds of objects arise, whether it's kaya, physicality, vedana, feeling, citta, consciousness, or dhamma, general objects, when any one of these four arises, one, uh, one <coughs> observes with steadfast sati. And when our observation becomes good, our sati becomes good, then virya, art and effort, is all also present. And also samadhi, the collected mind, plus accurate aim. So when these four factors are complete, then correct knowledge is present, knowing correctly. Virya, sati, and samadhi, energy, awareness, and concentration make up the samadhi group of the path. They make up the training of samadhi, samadhi seka. Therefore, the teaching of samadhi is complete in oneself at this time. With accurate aim and correct knowledge, the wisdom portion of the path, the training of wisdom, panya seka, is also present. So in every moment of observation, the training of concentration, samadhi seka, and the training of panya, the training of wisdom, panya seka, are present. And sila, morality, is complete initially. So therefore we have all three trainings, the training of, of sila, morality, the training of concentration, and the training of wisdom are complete in oneself. And if one can observe every second of the time, then these, these trainings are present. And this is true especially at the stage of Uddiya Bhyanyana, seeing the fast arising and passing away of phenomena. Because at that time, one's, one's observation is very keen and one, one doesn't miss, or if one does, one knows it right away and one is determined not to let oneself miss again. So in this way, one fills up the gaps in one's practice and makes, the, makes one's uh, situation better. So at this stage in the practice, the factors of vipassana are all complete, and this is cause for happiness. In the Buddhist texts, when one reaches this stage, it is said that the factors of pure knowledge are all complete. They all come together at this stage. Or they are also called the factors of one who knows or one who comes to gain this pure knowledge. In Pali, the word is bojanga. That's made up of two words, bodhi and anga. Bodhi means pure knowledge. And anga means a factor or a part. So bojanga means a, a part of pure knowledge or a factor of pure knowledge. Or it means one who knows. The, it means the cause for becoming one who knows with this pure knowledge. So if one continues to practice in this life, one will surely reach the state of a noble one, of an Arya. And um, in, the teachings, um, in the teachings of the Buddha, the factors, all the different factors which, which make up the teachings are present. And there are 37 of these factors uh, individually, and they fall into seven groups. And at this stage in the practice, all these factors are complete. These seven groups are, first of all, the group, the Satipatthana group. Second of all, the Samapatthana group. Third, 
Idi Pada. Four, the Indriyas. Five, the Bala or powers. And six, the Bojangas. And seven, the Maganga. So there are seven kind, kinds, seven groups, and some of these groups have four individual members, some have five, some have seven, and seven, some have eight. So when one adds them all up, it becomes 37. And these are called in Pali Bojanga, Bodhi Anga, Anga, the factors of pure knowledge. In the group of Satipatthana members, there's Kayanupasana Satipatthana, that is observing whatever physical act arises with steadfast sati. Vedana Nupasana Satipatthana, observation of feelings, good or bad, whatever arises with steadfast mindfulness. Chitta Nupasana Satipatthana, the observation of various types of consciousness, mind that arises, uh, whatever arises with uh, firmly established sati. And Dhamma Nupasana Satipatthana, observing, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, observing, kama, chanda, nivarana, and so on, all the general objects whenever they arise with steadfast sati. So, when, um, when we observe, we try to, within the large field of observation, there are individual objects arising. And we have to start our practice according to what is evident. This is a saying in Vipassana, So what is the easiest thing to see? There's mind and matter, nama and rupa, and of these two, it's easier to see the physical. It's easier to see matter. And among the physical matter, what is easiest to see are the elements, the four basic elements to make up matter. And of the elements... The easiest one of these to see is the air element. The air element creates movement, it supports, it causes tension, causes tightness. And thus it is easier to see than all the other four elements. So because of this we start our observation with that. And the rising and falling is basically air. And so we use that as our main object. Lifting, moving, placing also is caused by air. So we give preference to observing what is easy to observe. And at first we can't observe very much. But as we follow the instructions uh, with trust that they will benefit, then within a week one can come to know pretty well. And... If one doesn't learn the method of practice, or one learns it but doesn't apply it systematically, or doesn't use it at all, then it won't make any difference how long one practices. One can practice a week, two weeks, three weeks, one month, two months. Without application, systematic application of the practice, it won't be effective. But when one understands the benefits of the practice and therefore cherishes the practice, then such a one will work respectfully, meticulously, without even taking a break during one's day. And such people quickly gain momentary concentration, kanika samadhi, and they quickly come to see how the old is replaced by the new how one thing is continually being replaced by another, how things, how whatever one is observing, whether it's kaya, vedana, chitta, or dhamma, the physical feelings, the mind, the dhammas, thinking, the nivaranas, whatever it is, one is able to note that object. And one knows what one observes. 
So um, some yogis are also, when they do walking meditation and they miss a noting, they know exactly where they were when they missed. So one knows quite well what one is able to observe and one also knows what one has missed. And this is, this is very important to know, about, to know clearly in this way. So one, um, in the practice one knows what is the correct path to, path to follow and that this is beneficial. Uh, and one also knows what is the incorrect path, uh, that it is unbeneficial and therefore to avoid it. So this type of knowledge is very important. So at the stage of Udhya Jnana, there are almost no misses. One, one almost never misses the objects, even small ones. And from here on, the yogis are happy with their work. So they're not bored. They don't back off from the practice at this stage because the gravitational pull of the Dhamma is strong. The meditation teachers at this point don't have very much that they need to do to guide the yogi. Just uh, The yogi just needs to keep on going. When one reaches this stage, before this stage in the practice, one has taken on the name of yogi, but one is not, has not um, come to possess the qualities of yogi yet. When one starts out, although one is doing the practice, one is a a yogi in name only. So, at the start, one has to understand uh, what a yogi is. So, what we do is to make the mind clean, develop the clean mind, and increase it, make it occur more and more frequently so that one's knowledge arises. So at this, sorry, at this stage in the practice, let me start again, at this stage in the practice of seeing the past arising and passing away, one understands, one has come to understand what a yogi is because the clean mind is being developed and increased, made to occur again and again. And one, one's knowledge is very swift. One sees how things arise and pass in a way in a fleeting, very quick manner. Starting with small things, one can see very clearly. So this is how one's mind has expanded due to the practice. So one's mind and knowledge have increased, have become developed. And what is necessary to bring about this development of the mind and development of knowledge is first of all initial effort. And second of all, one needs to step up one's effort. And third, one needs to have effort that doesn't let up until it reaches the goal. So these, these three factors make up a yogi. So at this stage in the practice, these factors are complete. So this is, these three types of effort are called yoga. And, sorry, the initial, one needs to make initial effort an effort to start the practice. And then one needs to um, overcome laziness. What happens is that as one starts the practice, one hasn't seen the benefits yet. The results haven't come yet. And so laziness comes in. At this stage, one has to increase one's effort and overcome laziness and boredom. So what is the goal? There should be a goal. And when we go to school, when we study, we consider, well, how much am I going to learn? How much am I going to study? What am I going to work for? 
how much do I want to earn so that I can support my family? So in the world, we should have an objective. And in, in the practice, too, in this task of becoming a true human being, with a human mentality and having human knowledge to gain better than human knowledge, one should have this type of goal. Life without an objective has no meaning. So one should have an objective to keep good sila and then to develop and expand the mind, develop knowledge. But not by imagination and not by wishing, not by just learning a method or reading about how to practice. One has to start the work. So that is the first stage of effort. And secondly, when laziness and boredom come in, one has to increase one's effort. And then from there, one goes for the, to the final goal. We have human knowledge, but we want to gain something better, a better type of human knowledge. For Seiraoji, uh, he thinks the minimum goal should be to ach- achieve first path and fruition, sotapati path and f- knowledge. So without a goal, life is not meaningful. And in the world, in our education and in our work, we establish goals and then we, because we want to be able to take care of ourselves comfortably and to take care of our family. So in, with the practice too, if one is a human, then it's important to be a true human being. And it's important to have a human mentality, human heart. And it's important to have human knowledge that is special. For this, one needs to develop the three trainings. And without effort, Virya, it is not possible to, to develop the three trainings. It is not possible without making the effort to overcome laziness. And it's not possible without making effort that keeps on going until one reaches one's goal. So this is the meaning of the word yogi, yota, yotataya yogi. That is one that one that makes these three kinds of effort, the initial effort, the increased effort, and the fulfilled effort, effort that goes to completion, to develop the mind and develop knowledge. So one who possesses these three stages of effort is called a yogi. And at this stage in the practice, one sees the very quick arising and passing away of phenomena. At this stage, one is a true yogi. And the benefit of being a true yogi is that one doesn't retreat, one doesn't back up. So, and the reason for this is because one has tasted the flavor of the Dhamma. If one is a true yogi, then one's virya effort is good. Virya means courage. It's the quality of a hero. A hero is a person who, when they meet an obstacle, doesn't back up. According to the situation, they look at the situation and then they advance. So a hero isn't afraid for his or her life or limb. If one is afraid, then one can't be heroic. So yogis have to be courageous in the practice. And until now, there have been no deaths due to the practice. In fact, many people have overcome diseases due to the practice and have been able to live much longer than they would have due to the practice. So 
leaving that aside, Sayadaraji first spoke about the four types of satipatthana. So, to have to develop um, morality, samadhi, wisdom, sila samadhi panya, is very important for us. And in order to develop these, one can't uh, sort of consider, one can't favor oneself. One has to make courageous effort in order to develop these trainings. So there are four uh, ways in which one has to make effort. One has to uh, make effort when there are things that are disturbing to the work of kusala. One has to make effort to... uh, um, to get rid of them. One has to also make effort so that not that things like that don't happen again, so that unwholesome, unwholesome tendencies don't uh, happen again. So one has to make effort to remove the ones that have arisen and, to, and one also has to make effort to um, so that unwholesomeness doesn't arise again like like ones that arose previously. And then one also, if the wholesome, wholesome actions, wholesome speech, wholesome mentality hasn't yet arisen in one, one has to start to make that happen. So one has to make effort in that way to develop wholesome physical, verbal, and mental behavior. And if one has, if such behavior has arisen, then one has to work to develop this, to expand it, to make it occur more and more frequent, frequently. So that from just a few occurrences of wholesome behavior or speech or mentality, one creates many. And from a a very weak and immature stage, one develops wholesomeness to maturity. So one has to have these four kinds of effort. This type of effort is called, these four are called supreme effort. And if one makes effort in these four areas, then steadfast sati is sure to follow. This type of effort is called in Pali samapadana, and uh, some people translate it that as supreme effort. So at the stage of Udhyabhya Jnana, seeing the fast arising and passing away of phenomena, one's effort is balanced. It, it doesn't uh, fall down, it, one doesn't slack off, but one's effort steadily increases. So a yogi needs to have these four kinds of virya or effort. One should have a goal. And when one makes an aim to, to accomplish something, the basic cause for achieving success is called in Pali itipara. There are four factors that are um, that become the basis, the basic cause for success. So this, um, these, this cause for success must be present. It's like when you build a building; the foundation is important, and these basic causes for success, these these four qualities, which become the base for one to uh, accomplish what one aims for are very important. So, so here we learn, you know, we learn the correct method of practice. We, we search for and we find the correct method. And then one has zeal or desire to gain the results. 
So this is seal called Chanda in Pali is one of the factors that become a cause for success. One, uh, for one who has the desire to accomplish something, there is nothing that cannot be accomplished. This, this is how one, uh, the attitude that one has. Because I have the desire to accomplish, I know that there is nothing that cannot be accomplished through my strong desire to achieve so when one has strong zeal, strong chanda, then based on that, one can achieve what one aims for. Sometimes it's our courageous effort that becomes the base for success. Virya. This is the courage to overcome difficulties when one encounters them. The courage to avoid base behavior the courage to stick with what is right. And for one who has courage, there is nothing that cannot be accomplished. The mind is the third factor that can become a base chitta, consciousness, the mind. This can be the base for our success when our mind is firm. When we meet up with something that is cause for depression, that tends to make the mind back up. One doesn't want to go forward. But one can make one's mind firm, knowing that with this firm mind, with my decision, with my, my, with my mind uh, set to accomplish what I'm aiming for, there is nothing that cannot be accomplished. And the fourth quality is knowledge, Vimansa, the investigation. So one, it's good to investigate, and one investigates, one finds, has to find a method for developing the mind. So one researches. This method itself is a process of self research, studying oneself. And when one develops the factors, the basic mental factors that are needed in the practice, one begins to know things bit by bit. One gains the knowledge of distinguishing between mind and matter. And as one progresses, one, uh, these factors, one's knowledge becomes sharper at the stage of Udya Bhyanyana. One's knowledge is quite sharp. And needless to say, Needless to say, one's knowledge is very sharp at the stages above Udhya Vyanyana. So this type of knowledge can also be a base for success. With knowledge, there is nothing one can't accomplish. There's no task that can't be accomplished. So based on any one of these four factors, one's aim can be accomplished based on one's zeal or chanda, one's courageous effort, one's firm mind, or one's wisdom, one's knowledge. So these, um, these bases for success occur at the stage of Udhya Bhyanyana, seeing the fast arising and passing away of phenomena. If one reaches the stage of Udhya Bhyanyana, seeing the fast arising and passing away of phenomena, then as one continues to practice according to the correct method, day by day, even hour by hour, one sees special differences in one's mind as one goes along. And one feels uh, that one feels that this sorry one feels that this method is true so one one understands my mind is has changed and knowledge is occurring so one comes to acceptance and acknowledgement of the method and the benefits it brings so this is faith sada and 
when one goes forward with this, one knows what is correct. One knows what is the correct path and has firm faith in the method and the benefits that come from it. So this faith becomes a ruling quality. So whether someone persuasive comes to you and tries to tell you, tries to raise doubts in your mind about the practice, about uh, and, uh, and so on, one has such strong faith that one is able to control oneself in the face of of these people trying to raise doubts. This is how faith becomes, a de- this decisive faith that develops in the practice uh, is able to uh, be a controlling factor or ruling factor. So when one's faith becomes very clear, developed, and good, then one has the courage to avoid doing what is unwholesome and the courage to do what is pure and clean. And uh, one doesn't want to undertake anything that is base and low. If uh, One doesn't want to give in to laziness and so on. So one is, one is very brave about avoiding any type of unwholesome action. And at present, there is a lot of injustice in the world. Unjust acts destroy one's own morality and they harm others. And the prevalence of injustice, injustice is causing a lot of problems in the world. So when one practices this ruling factor of courageous effort becomes better. And as one's effort, as one's virya becomes better, so too one's sati becomes better. And sati becomes a ruling factor in the mind. And the, uh, the mind, because of the control of sati, it doesn't get scattered. And the samadhi becomes stronger due to the strength of sati. So the mind is being ruled also by concentration or samadhi. And one's knowledge is very keen because one sees very in very sm- great detail. One sees uh, things that occur very in a very uh, quick and fleeting manner. So this knowledge at this stage also becomes a ruling factor. It keeps unwholesomeness from arising. So when these ruling factors of faith, effort, sati, samadhi, and panya, wisdom, become good, they become powerful. So these are the five powers that develop in the practice. The power of faith, effort, sati, samadhi, and panya. So it's very clear in the practice how these develop. If there's no correct faith, that is, if there's no faith that good actions bring good results, bad actions bring bad results, if one doesn't have that understanding but thinks, whatever we do, it's okay, everything's over when we die, So when one doesn't have accurate, have correct faith, but believes in this way, then violence is mostly what happens. And mostly people commit wrong, commit wrong, wrongdoing. So when one can't control oneself, that's one thing. One can't control oneself without uh, correct understanding and faith. And one errs. One makes mistakes, and one's uh, one's knowledge also errs. So in this in this way, the ruling factors are destroyed. And when the rulers are bad, then what is being governed is also 
uh, also suffers. So this is a topic that Seiroji will continue tomorrow night. That's all for today. Sa-